An OnlyFans stripper says naked videos are what God wants her to do. So just imagine if you kind of like made that statement or that for some reason you believed that a higher power is telling you to get naked online, right? Welcome to 40 inboxcom where we help you master your money. So we're going to break down this story. So this model is redefining what it means to be holy posting on OnlyFans. By the way, that is not the model right there. It's just some dude with a very long tongue. So Nita Marie, a self-proclaimed Christian OnlyFans model, asserts that stripping for strangers online is what God wants me to do. I asked God if I should continue stripping off and the answer was always yes. The Colorado resident, 45, told Jam Press. Mary believes it's her divine mission to empower other women to embrace their sexuality. The godly model, who has 953,000 followers and earns about $1.8 million a year, found Christianity after having a dream about Jesus when she was nine years old. Although she was not raised in a religious household, she became more spiritual and tried to build a relationship with Christ without all the misogyny. Now, this is technically the uh, OnlyFans model that believes that God told her to strip. For those that are watching it on the 40 YouTube channel. Now... Either way, like before we continue the story, let's just break this down in like the financial sense because we always talk about finances, right? So what's interesting about this, right, is that she's basically making, let's just round it up, right? She's making $2 million a year, right? $2 million a year. And let's just say, you know, with taxes, we're just going to keep it simple. Let's say she's going to pay half that in taxes, Okay. So that means, you know, she'll make a million dollars after taxes. Well, how would you manage your money if you're like in her situation, right? Like, let's say that you are able to make one million dollars basically consistently like recurring because I believe OnlyFans is like a kind of like Netflix style kind of like personal content kind of thing where is like a monthly subscription service, which means that the $2 million that she basically makes or, you know, after taxes, right, could be, you know, a consistent $1 million per year that comes into her bank account. So the best way for her to really manage her money, right, is to obviously, one, first and foremost, pay off her debt, right? Because if she is truly believing that God told her to do this for some reason, then she would also understand that if you were to actually look into the Bible, that it literally says in the Bible that people who have debt are slaves to the lender, right? Meaning you do not want to be a slave to... The person that or company that lent you money right so this means pay off your credit card debt pay off your mortgage pay off your car loans right like anything that you have debt on you pay that off period end of story right and especially if you are following you know faith wise that kind of principle you pay off all your debts right because you don't want to be a servant to anyone Right, you don't want to be a slave to anyone or to any corporation. That being said, if she were to pay off her debt, right? So let's just say you know she has like a million dollars after taxes. Let's say she uses like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to pay off all of her debt that she might have, right? I'm just taking a guess. She might not have any, but let's just say that she's going to pay off her debt. Okay. So then after that point, I'd probably stick about. The thing is, she. She probably doesn't need that much money per month. I don't know what her monthly expenses are, but she should really end up creating like some sort of an emergency fund, probably only about 
I would say personally, if I was in her situation doing what she was doing, I'd probably just stay around like a six month emergency fund. But if for some reason you think that this is going to be a short lived career, like this type of money would be short lived, then I'd maybe do something more like a full year of like an emergency fund, right? It all depends on like how secure you feel in this type of situation, right? Like if you've had, you know, steady amounts of growth every single year, then you could be a little bit more confident and have a smaller emergency fund, right? So let's just say, you know, she ends up putting, I don't know, like about 50 G's or, you know, let's just say 100,000 because she's making so much money. Let's say she puts $100,000 for an emergency fund, right? So she spent like 350 total. That means she's got, what, $650,000 left over. At this point, I'd probably take care of my kids if I have any kids. I would basically fund their colleges completely if they end up wanting to go to college. And I would be putting basically all that leftover money straight into investments that are going to provide me cash flow and consistent growth. And basically lean more so on along the lines of nothing high risk, nothing really even moderately risky, right? And what I mean by this is that if I like basically $650,000 to basically invest in, right, to invest the money, I probably split it 50-50 between buying a rental property and putting the rest into like an index fund, like the S&P 500, that basically just trades the S&P 500, right? Where it has basically a proven track record of basically, you know, on an annual basis, having like a 7 to 12% return, which when you really understand this, that means whatever you basically put into it, pretty much every seven years, it's going to double. So let's just say that we were to put like, you know, let's just round it up, $700,000 into an index fund that pays off, you know, the 12%, 7 to 12% roughly, right? And we're just going to say that it's doubling every seven years, right? That means you put $700,000 into it right now, seven years down the line, it's going to be worth $1.4 million. And then seven years down the line from that, it's going to be $2.8 million. And that's not including any extra money you end up putting into it. And here's the thing, like if this is like a recurring type of revenue that she can basically rely on and it keeps growing more and more and more, then I would heavily focus on just putting a lot of money into investments and have those investments basically reinvest in itself, right? Because basically for any index fund that ends up trading the S&P 500, you can pretty much just have it reinvest the dividends that it produces to create more shares of the index fund, right? So you don't got to make this complicated. You can keep this very simple and you could like she or anyone in a similar situation could technically just have this cash cow being able to get like milked every single year to where you just could keep pounding and like pouring into the bucket of just massive amounts of wealth, right? Like this type of money can easily become generational wealth. For a very long time, right? Because it could just start doubling to such an extent that this is the crazy thing, right? It could get to the point where her investments could end up making her more money than how much she's actually making from her OnlyFans business, right? Like that's what's really crazy. Like if she ends up getting to that point where her investments actually start producing more money than her main gig is it's going to be insane right but here's the thing she could do that and make massive strides in her increase in net wealth right or net worth but everyone else can also do this as well you don't have to be making you know nearly two million dollars a year to be doing something like this right this can work at literally any income level so if you need help with mastering your money 
Go check out 40inbox.com to learn the secret to mastering your money, meaning you could get out of debt, build an emergency fund, and start investing so that you can live the life that you want to live. And you don't have to be someone who says that God told them to strip on OnlyFans. You don't have to do that. You could be a construction worker. You could basically be doing whatever it is that you're doing and still live a very pretty much stress-free life. See you in future episodes. And if you like this sort of content, feel free to hit the like button. And if you believe that she's telling the truth, hit the like button. And if you believe that she's lying, hit the like button. See you in future episodes. Peace out.